Good morning all of you. Today I would like to speak on structuralism and semiotics. First of all, let us learn what structuralism is. This lecture covers definition of structuralism, important structuralists, Ferdinand D. Sechaux, Ronald Barthes, Charles Sanders Pierce and their theories. And at the same time, this lecture would also cover details on semiotics and who are the important theorists of semiotics and how we can apply this theory to everyday life. So these things I'm going to cover in this lecture. Now let's start with Marx's definition that in the social construction of human life, men enter into certain relations which are independent of his life. That is to say, we have in, imbibed or we acquire a signifying system within us, within a, over a period of time of experience with this life. And this, signi and this signifying system is a wide concept. It means any organized and structured set of signs which carries cultural meanings. In this category, it includes such diverse phenomenon as works of literature, tribal rituals, fashions, styling of cars, contents of advertisements, clothing, food, lifestyle, etc. Now, let us look into the three important structuralists. They believed, structuralists believed that any element can never be understood in its isolation. Each element can be understood only in relation to other elements as part of a larger structure. In order to understand a leaf of a plant, you should understand its stem, its root, flower, seeds, the way it grows, the, the factors which influence its growth, everything. So in order to understand a leaf, you need to understand leaf in a larger context of a plant and its environment. Structuralists believed in this important maxim. The three important structuralists, as I said earlier, are Ferdinand D. Sechaux, Roland Barthes and Charles Sanders Pierce. Now let us come to Ferdinand D. Sechaux. Ferdinand D. Sechaux believed that every human, human being acquires and learns certain signifying systems within his life over a period of his lifetime. And this includes this linguistic signifying system also. The, this linguistic value is determined in relation to and difference with other signs in the system. Now we acquire linguistic system in along with its components. Linguistic system includes phonology, semiology, syntax, discourse and its social context. A person who acquires linguistic system will also understand the way to pronounce the words, when to pronounce the words and difference between each linguistic element and its associate components. So this linguistic value is determined in relation to and difference with other signs in the system. For example, a person who understands the meaning of heart only in relation to shed, house, mansion, palace. So he knows the difference between these words then only he is able to understand the meaning of heart. So this relation with other elements helps him in understanding the concept of art. Now this he calls, this larger signifying system of language he calls langua. This is like linguistic system as a whole. It includes syntax, phonology, system of signs shared by a community. Now when a person has this resource of language within his mind, he is able to understand a particular utterance done by a particular person. For example, if a teacher instructs a student to switch off their mobile phones, a person who understands this already knows the kind of sentence the teacher is speaking. He knows it is a kind of imperative sentence and it starts with a verb. He knows shut or 
keep your switch off your mobile phone switch off he knows the meaning of it he knows the switch off pronunciation he knows the spelling of it and the, within this larger structure he understands that individual verbal utterance of that particular teacher as an instruction so in order to understand a particular utterance he needs to have a larger signifying linguistic system which he has already learned learned by the person through his experience in the in his life this is what ferdinand de saussure understood as a structure less so he understood there is a larger linguistic system which signifies syntax phonology system of signs and there are individual utterances which are uh, individual utters through the language or language resources which within, within his mind so this is the structure he thought that the signifying systems are making in the world next comes ronald barthes so his method of analysis is to divide this divide he understood that this signifying system consists of various codes now he classifies signifying systems various codes as he identifies five codes in the signifying system there are paroetretic code hermeneutic code cultural code the semic code the symbolic code like ferdinand de saussure de saussure ronald barthes also understood that there is a larger signifying system through which an individual has learned certain codes and these codes helps him in understanding the individual utterances means there is a larger signifying system which has codes within it and when there is a particular language phenomenon like a story like a poem like a novel or an utterance he is able to match the underlying inherent codes with that particular utterance so according to him an individual when he understands a story he identifies certain codes in the story line now let us say take an example of a woodcutter and uh, an axe story once upon a time to narrate the story roughly once upon a time a woodcutter started earning his life by cutting wood in the forest and he was very poor so every day he went to forest in search of wood and he went deep into the forest to uninhabited places so that he can get better wood that one day he thought there was a fine wooden branch which is hanging above a river he thought of cutting it now he climbed the tree accidentally unexpectedly while cutting the branch his axe fell into the river the deep waters where he tried to bring the axe back failed him very much now without getting any other uh, solution he started crying on the banks of the river and all of a sudden the river goddess appeared and he she, she assured him that he should not worry and she would help him now he she asks him to seek a uh, seek a boon from her and he says that he wants his axe back now the river goddess went inside the river brought him a gold golden axe and asked her asked the woodcutter to take it the woodcutter refused to take the golden axe then the gold river goddess went in, inside the river and she brought up with a silver axe the woodcutter refused silver axe also and then the goddess came for the last time to get him his real iron axe now the goddess questions him why he doesn't want a golden and silver axe and only the iron one the woodcutter says 
that the golden axe and silver axe may give him money for that day or some wealth for a certain period of time but the um, the iron axe would give him the employment for his lifetime and he wants employment for his life for a lifetime and not for a temporary certain limited time period of time the goddess was very happy with his answer she gave him both the axes and she went away now in order to understand this story a person who listens to this story starts with once upon a time that word is already within his mind and she and he understand this by looking at first there was a woodcutter who eeks his life by cutting wood in the forest then one day he goes to inhabitable places deep in the forest then one day he found out a branch hanging above the river so see these sentences once upon a time then next the second time third time these words indicate the story line this helps the narrative to develop from one stage to the next stage this stages next then afterwards finally firstly secondly thirdly these phrases connecting links help one to understand the story now this quotes are already imbibed in the mind any variation without these connecting links would not help a listener to understand the narrative so these quotes are already imbibed in the mind this is what barthes identified as proaretic code then he identifies hermeneutic code which is already acquired by the listener he says this code poses questions or enigmas which provide narrative substance for example the sentence he knocked on a certain door in the neighborhood of pell street makes the reader wonder who lived there what kind of neighborhood it was and so on then he talks Uh, Barthes talks about the cultural code. The cultural code contains references out beyond the text to what is regarded as common knowledge. For example, the sentence "Agent Angelus was the kind man who sometimes arrived at work in old talk" evokes a pre-existing image in the reader's mind of the kind of man this person is. this might give the listener the meaning of incompetence indiscipline dirtiness of the person as described in the narrative now this cultural codes are already imbibed in the listener's mind and he uses these codes to gather connecting links gather meaning from the story or even the character Next Barthes identifies the fourth code as the semic code. This is also called the connotative code. It is linked to theme and this code when organized around a particular proper name constitutes a character. Its operation is demonstrated in this the coming example after I tell about the symbolic code. Then he talks about the symbolic code. This code is also linked to theme but on a larger scale, scale to speech it consists of contrast and pairing related to the most by basic binary polarity male and female nice and gay good and evil nice and hard and so on these are the structures of contrasted elements which structurally see as fundamental to the human way of perceiving and organizing reality now to summarize what ronald barthes says barthes says that human beings inherit or acquire or learn certain cores within their mind and when there is an individual or a particular narrative or a text in front of him he tries to go to those cores which he has already acquired and taking hints from those four cores within his mind he tries to understand the individual utterance this is the way the meanings are captured according to ronald barthes 
So meaning the structure in a larger signifying system called Langua, according to Fonin and D. Fisher, and Gunnar Bartos say that meanings are inside or put inside the core they inherited by the listener. These are the different ways in which they understood the meaning creation process. Now we will come to Charles Sangel Stewart, so he is the oldest of structuralists. He says, he says, the ideas do not belong to the soul, but the soul belongs to the idea. Uh, Charles Sanger Spear was a prominent pragmatist. He believed that, that all nature, laws of nature are not permanent, definite, stable, absolute truths. They thought that laws of nature are changing over a period of time. The belief that even scientific laws, that laws of mathematics are also not ob absolute, they might change. And over a period of time, these laws of nature become habits of action and laws of habits. According to him, reality is larger than human meaning system. So whatever meanings which human beings have created is temporal and they call they called it as teleology. Things are teleological. Means development of teleology meaning is happening continuously in the human world and the human universe or whole universe is changing constantly. So according to him that I am, uh, uh, to quote Charles Sanders Spear, Spear says, I am inaccurate, I am like a wasp in the bottle. So he believed that human knowledge system is like a bottle which is sealed on the top. The world, the natural world and meaning system or reality is larger than what human perception can perceive, can understand. So that is why he compares himself to a wasp in a bottle. Now, he believes that nothing is real in a long time. Na nature is vibrant, alive. Everything is subject to change and it is free floating. So that is why he believed that to understand a particular phenomenon for a process or for a particular uh, activity, human beings have to understand in the larger context of their human perception itself and reality is beyond human perception. So this human created conceptual world is the base on which individual can understand his own particular example or particular instances. So all these three, Ronald Barthes, Charles Sanders Spears and Ferdinand de Saussure believe that there is a larger structural universe and individual elements can be understood in comparison with this larger structure. So this we call it as structuralism. Now this structuralism were also founders of semiosis. So semiosis is, not, is, is the study of the process of meaning creation. Process of meaning creation or it is a study of the question how do we derive meanings? How human beings derive meanings from various things around us? Now, to look at how human beings constructed this world. Now, all of us know that we as human beings have not retained the human world or the natural world intact. We have brought in things which we want, we have removed things which we do not want, we have created our own world around us. That is why uh, Chris asserts 
that sign makers that is human beings has a vested interest in creating a sign or semiotic interest so we have construct out of the natural world we have constructed a world which is suitable which is convenient for us we have built roads which help us we have built bridges we have built houses which were not existing in the natural world we have all constructed an entirely different world from the natural world and this is for with our, this we have done for our with our own personal interest and no nature has nothing to do with the world which we have created and once we have created a system of meanings around us we will naturally unconsciously inherit this meaning systems as we grow up and there is nobody to force us or even to pester us to learn these meanings now as marx says in the social construction of our lives we enter into certain relations which are independent of our lives the things which human beings have created us these things which get which they get into our mind without our knowledge unconsciously we acquire those meanings as marx has said now these representations so whatever we have done are not not natural we these are all whatever we see around us are representations which human beings have constructed it, it may be a larger universe of roads bridges or um, institutions schools colleges hospitals police stations bus stops or whatever or even certain representations which are deliberately made for human beings like us these include all representations like advertisements placards posters movies texts plays poems cover pages or reflections and representations done for the, the interest done by the interest of certain human beings now with this background these three important theorists especially two important theorists um ferdinand de saussure and charles sanders peirce understood how these representations or whatever it is the larger representative world of bridges roads schools colleges hospitals police stations at the one hand and deliberately done representations like advertisements placards posters movie texts plays poems cover pages etc try they have tried to understand how these representations meanings representations create meanings for us now charles sanders peers say that human meaning system is created out of, out of the triadic relationship brought forth by the signs that is to say sign is the fundamental element which emanates meaning out of it now the sign means something which the sign is a combined whole of different semiotic elements now a sign contains various semiotic resources for example a word like dog contains the semiotic resource of d o g alphabets and the way it is written the way it is pronounced and the font used in the writing of that word so there are various different word resources which is associated within a small word like dog which is giving us meaning so important theorists like sanders peirce and uh, ferdinand de saussure have said that there is meanings in the sign system and sign systems combine various semiotic resources within them which creates meaning now like like a group of words gives meaning like a group of sentences make meaning various semiotic elements various semiotic modes will give meaning to the readers so like language these pictures placards poems advertisements give meanings out of 
the various resources which are put together in a sign. Now, this sign language is a semiotic resource which is used in the communication of specific messages as well as psychological position of a given audience. Different modalities including language, zones, angles, frames, etc. combine in different ways to communicate meanings in visual representation. The combining of different modes of semiotic resources to meaning is known as multimodality. Now this is what these important theorists believe that all meanings are derived out of signs and this sign is a combination of three components according to Charles Sanders Peale. The first one is the signifier. Signifier is the representament that is represented a picture of a dog, a photo of a dog. Now this representament is the derivative of the real object called referent. This is the real dog. And this dog is presented in the form of a photo or a picture as a signifier. And this is interpreted by the listeners or readers in various ways. Now this dog can be understood as a bulldog or a Labrador dog or a different kind of dog. It depends on the in interpreter's experience and the way of the way of his his ways of interpretation. Now Sanders Spear says this is the triadic system of meaning creation. That is, meaning is created out of these three processes. Reference is the object. Signifier, representament is the representative of the object. And interpretant is the way the listener understand that concept. Now this is how a sign gives meaning according to Charles and your spears. And as we saw, reality is never absolute. Reality is, is not definite. It is always continuous. It is always changing. This is the idea of Charles Sanders Spears as a pragmatist and he believed that this interpretant is never stable. It is static. That is to say, interpretant varies with wide range of people. Different people creates various kinds of interpretants. So, interpretant is a wide area where people create larger sets of meanings and not just limited by the representament or even not limited to the object itself. That is why as, as a pragmatist, he believed that interpretant leads to one interpretant interpre and that would lead to another set of interpretation and uh, that, would, that would be a continuous process. So this is what Charles Sanders Pierce, how meaning would be created. And then he identifies various kinds of signs and in, in relation to its meaning. Now he said there will be icons. Icon is a picture similar to the referent or the object. Now for example on the highway you have picture of a school going boy and a girl which is installed as a poster. That is to say there is a school nearby. So that is an icon. Icon is representament which is similar or which is identical to the referent or the object. Index is something which gives the meaning, hidden meaning. If you look at the um, smoke, you will understand that there is fire somewhere. Similarly, symbol is if you look at the color white or if you look at the color red, you will understand it according to the culture you live in. Now, red symbolizes danger, red symbolizes uh, a love, red symbolizes uh, uh, purity, red symbolizes in, in different cultures, it means uh, various, it gives various meanings. Now, as we saw, semiotics is the study of the process of meaning creation and meanings happen in a triadic relation according to Charles Sanders Peirce and Ferdinand de Sachat said that there are, there are signifiers, signifiers is 
the uh, is similar to Charles Sanders Peirce's representaments. That is, that may be a sound, it may be a word, it may be a picture, it may be a postcard, it may be a placard. That is the signifier, and that will lead to signified. Signified is similar to interpretant of Charles Sanders Peirce. Now he said this relationship, signifier and signified relationship, is arbitrary. Arbitrary means that it is naturally, it is not naturally fixed. That is to say, the word dog is not fixed uh, fixed to the object of the dog which we imagine, dog which we see in the real world. So it may change. So words, sounds, and meanings are not fixed entities. They are not fixed associations. And to understand, and and these signs are relational. He also said. Language which contains signs is relational, relational in the sense that you understand dog in comparison with a cat. So dog is not something which is a cat, dog is not something which is a cow, dog is not something which is a donkey. So in order to understand dog, you compare it with different animals and it and these signs are constitutive. So before Ferdinand de Sachar, people understood that words, language defines or gives names to the objects of the world. Its function is only to give information. But as Ferdinand D. Sasha's research came, came out into the world, it said that language does just doesn't define the world, but it forms and shapes the world. The words themselves are not merely limited by their meanings. They do beyond that. They evoke emotions. They give meanings. They instruct people. They convince people. They persuade people. So language shapes the world. Language changes the world and not limited to just its factual meaning. So this is the Ferdinand D. Sachar's way of how meaning process is created. Now, as I said to you earlier, semiotics is the study of the process of meaning creation or the process of derivation of meaning to human beings. Now, as I said to you, just just as many words are combined together in various ways to give meaningful sentence, various semiotic resources combine together to communicate, communicate meanings in representamen or representatives, representations of the world like placards, postcards, advertisements, poems, novels and cultural artifacts and other cultural artifacts. Now, for example, if you have a picture, if you have a picture advertisement in your uh, magazine or you saw